1981, summer to fall. Jai Tirtha continues to have problems. Uh, I, it's not on the video, but I had related in the 1980, Jai Tirtha was starting to have problems. He started uh, having fall downs with illicit affair with, I think, his female disciples back then. So the GBC forced him basically to take sannyas. He was married. So they forced him to take sannyas, but he's still having problems a year later, so that a year, year and a half later. On one occasion, Jayatirtha is, is, he's singing Jayarada Madhava before he gives class, but he's saying Jayarada Madhava for four hours straight instead of giving the Srimad Bhagavatam class. Another time while singing Jayarada Madhava, he falls off the Vyasasan onto the floor and he's making strange sounds. Some of his disciples, and even a few Prabhupada disciples, they claim, Jayatirtha has broken through. <laughs> they claim that he's exhibiting the symptoms of the highest love of Godhead. He's exhibiting symptoms similar to those of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He has achieved bhava, pure love of God. While other devotees saw it more you know, down-to-earth way, that he was, looked like he was exhibiting the symptoms of one who's taken LSD. <clears throat> In the end, the later was proven to be the fact. Jayatirtha had been, you know, pressured into taking sannyas, but now, in 1981, he's living with a female disciple, and he's caught having illicit fare with another girl. And we hear that, you know, he's having devotees buy LSD for him. And in the Rose Garden, we heard that, in the Rose Garden at the Bhaktivedanta Manor, that he asked devotees to photograph him naked, having his rendezvous with his lover in the garden. Previous to joining ISKCON, Jayatirtha knew and associated with Timothy Leary. He was the LSD high priest. And now that Jayatirtha is guru, as good as God, he basically became a sahaja. And he's taking himself to be Krishna, and he sees all the young, attractive girls, his disciples, as gopi lovers. And he wants to imitate the amorous pastimes of Krishna. Taking LSD completes the illusion for him, and he believes the illusion. At the same time, and he has at least one steady lover. And he goes back to wearing white instead of uh, sannyas saffron. So he starts wearing white and lives as a grihasta again. In fact, he even starts living with his wife again. But when the GBC are provided with evidence and numerous complaints that he's actually taking LSD and that he's engaging in illicit affairs with other women besides living with his previous wife, then the GBC realize, I mean, they're at a loss of how to deal with him. So, you know, he's one of the, you know, 11 new acharyas and they're supposed to be on the highest level of spiritual life. They're supposed to be Mahabhagavats, Paramahansas. They're not supposed to fall down. So up till now, they keep trying to justify all the various fall downs by the Guru, saying that they aren't really fall downs. Some go as far to argue as that these are just the leelas, the pastimes of a pure devotee. They're just the leelas of a Paramahansa. But taking LSD and having devotees take photo, photos of him dancing naked and having sex with his own disciple, at some point, the GBC, enough of the GBC members, had to admit, this isn't Leela. <laughs> you know, he has totally fallen down. The GBC realized that they're getting nowhere with him. And so they advise him to please go and seek Sridhar Maharaj's guidance to see if Sridhar Maharaj can help him. Because the GBC are going to Sridhar. The gurus are going to Sridhar. So they can't figure out how to help him. Maybe Sridhar can. So on the GBC's request, Jayatirtha then goes to Sridhar. And Jayatirtha respects Sridhar. He respects him as a senior Vaishnav. He wouldn't listen to his godbrothers. But when he goes to Sridhar, Sridhar Maharaj was his elderly spiritual uncle. And Sridhar convinces him of his duty to Srila Prabhupada and to his disciples, so-called, and to his sannyas vows. With Sridhar's kind guidance, Jayatirtha regains his sanity. He again renounces intoxication and illicit sex. 
Sridhar Maharaj requests Jayatirtha to write a letter to Kirtanananda because it was Kirtanananda who had given Jayatirtha his sannyas initiation. Sridhar asks Jayatirtha to inform his sannyas guru that he has again taken up his sannyas vows and understands his fall downs and is vowing to restore his renunciation. And Jayatirtha does this. He renounces, renews his sannyas vows. He again leaves his wife. He vows to remain strictly celibate and to stop taking LSD and other such drugs. He feel, Jayatirtha feels energized, re-energized in his spiritual life again. However, because Sridhar had helped him, when Jayatirtha resumes his role as an ISKCON guru, he openly, he begins to openly glorify Sridhar Maharaj in the ISKCON temples. While giving Bhagavatam class, he glorifies Sridhar as having given him the spiritual strength to recover. Jayatirtha is feeling a genuine indebtedness to Sridhar. Jayatirtha asks his disciples to place Sridhar's photo on the temple altars, on the ISKCON temple altars, to put Sridhar's picture up and give him the respect of a senior Vaishnava, to respect him as Prabhupada's godbrother and respect him as the one who has saved their own guru. What? I mean, this totally upsets the apple cart. It upsets the orange cart. It upsets the mango cart, the lychee cart, the banana cart, <laughs> and just about any other sort of fruity cart you can think of. <laughs> yes, the GBC and the ISKCON gurus had been going to Sridhar for years. Privately, they had been glorifying him as being just as good as Srila Prabhupada. And just earlier that same year, Tamal Krishna and told Sridhar, our Guru Maharaj was kind upon us, so you are kind on us, upon us. I find no difference at all in how you are blessing us. My purpose is being fulfilled whenever I'm in your association. Imagine, Tamal Krishna saw no difference at all between the blessings of his own Guru, Srila Prabhupada, who by his blessing, you know, Tamal was being saved, and the blessings of Sridhar. And Rameshwar told Sridhar, I take it that Prabhupada is speaking to us through you. Privately, these and the other gurus and the GBC members, they were meeting with Sridhar, and privately they were glorifying him as as good as Prabhupada. But the unwritten code amongst the GBC was that this was to remain private and secret. Their relation with Sridhar was not to be made public. They understood how this could undermine the whole ISKCON mission. Well, it could undermine their position of gurus because in the new bhaktas, you know, they just can't know that the person, you know, that they are maybe seeking to become their guru, that this person is actually seeking guidance at the feet of another senior Vaishnav who is a guru in our disciplic line. So if the new, doctor, new bhaktas, you know, become, uh, you know, come to know that, that the new gurus are, are accepting Sridhar, they'll just go to Sridhar. And so it was the GBC's unwritten code, was that this, these meetings would be kept private. Their dealings and association with Sridhar was, was secret. But Jayatirtha, he felt that his spiritual life had been restored. And by the grace of Sridhar, and it was Sridhar's guidance that helped him, you know, restore re-establish his relationship with Srila Prabhupada. He felt indebted to Sridhar, and he felt ob obliged to let his disciples know that, that, that it was Sridhar who had basically saved him. The GBC men met with Jayatirtha, and they ordered him that he must, without fail, he must stop glorifying Sridhar openly and publicly. They ordered Jayatirtha to reverse his request to his disciples, to, that, that they replace Sridhar, that they place Sridhar's photo on the altar and give him respect. Jayatirtha refused. He saw his godbrothers were, were duplicious. They themselves were meeting with Sridhar. They were taking his guidance. In private, they were glorifying Sridhar. And private, they were saying that his association was just as good as Prabhupada's. 
you know, and Sridhar had, and, and from Jayatirtha's perspective, Sridhar had just saved his spiritual life. So he felt indebted to him and he just wanted that relationship be made public. Jayatirtha ignores the GBC's request and he continues to openly and publicly offer his respect to Sridhar and continues to ask his disciples to honor Sridhar and keep his photo on the ISKCON temples in Jayatirtha's zone. 